equations of parallel, perpendicular, horizontal, and vertical lines, right? So what you're going to be doing a lot of in this unit when the test is lens test? Wednesday. Wednesday, right? So we're finishing today, which gives you rest of today, tomorrow to uh, ask any questions, get anything cleared up, etc. And there's a review all pass around. Well, all you will have passed around. So if you want to go through that review, a lot of the stuff is just taking information, right, and then finding an equation. So beware, you know, if they give you the y-intercept, then what do you know? Everything. Well, you have a point. The y-coordinate. Yeah, the y-coordinate. What's the x-coordinate? Zero. Zero, right? So if they give you the y-intercept, if they say the y-intercept of something is 6, you know that the point 0, 6 exists, right? Because most of the time, we're using point-slope form. Right, y minus y1 equals mx minus x1, right? So if you give it an x-intercept, remember that it has coordinates of x comma zero, okay? So that you actually do have a point, even though you may think you don't have a point, right? Well, they just gave me the intercept. Well, that's a point, okay? So intercepts are, or you can find points. Okay, so number one, state. So what do you, what do, you do when you state? Yeah, you just write the answer down. Do you have to show any work? Yes. No. No. Okay, so the instructions are state whether the lines are parallel, perpendicular, or neither, and justify your answer. All right, and here are the lines. We have line A. Line A is 5x minus 3y plus 18 equals 0. And line B is 6x minus 10y plus 5 equals 0. So are those lines parallel? Per now, saying justify your answer means we may have, well, just as well have asked determine whether the lines, because you're going to have to show some work, right? So you're going to have to do some work. So what work are we going to do? What do we have to find? So. Okay, so how are we going to get the slopes? <coughs> Say what? I, you solve for y, right? You just put it into slope y-intercept form, and then there's the slope. Okay. Now, in, in a certain sense, if this were multiple choice, you don't really have to. You could just say, well, the slope of line A is 5 over 3, and the slope of line B is... 3 over 5, so they're neither, but we need to justify that, so let's show some work, right? So what would you do? <clears throat> you know, even if this <coughs> were multiple choice, so I would probably <clears throat> start out by isolating the y, so go 3y is equal to 5x plus 18, right? Move the 3y over and then just reverse the size, right? So you're running on the left. And so what's y equal to? 5 thirds x plus 6. We don't need the 6. Didn't ask for the y-intercept, right? So it's not strictly required. But really, it's not a lot of work to show. So we have changes to slope y-intercept form. We could say, you know, m is equal. So the slope is 5 thirds. Let's say the m of line a, for little a subscript there, right? Say slope of a is 5 over 3. Line b, okay, same deal, right? Move the 10y over and then just write it with sides reverse. So 6x plus 5. So y is 6 tenths x plus 5 tenths. So 3 fifths x plus 1 half. And so the slope of line B is? OK, so if they were parallel, what would happen? They'd be the same. They're perpendicular. 
how would we recognize them? Negative reciprocal. So they are reciprocals, but they're not negative reciprocals, right? So perpendicular lines, if you multiply the slopes together, you get negative 1, right? Since they're negative reciprocals. Um, what other lines are perpendicular but whose slopes are, they're not negative reciprocals? Yeah, they're horizontal and vertical, right? So if you've got a slope of zero and a slope of undefined, those are in fact perpendicular lines, but their slopes are zero and undefined. They are not negative reciprocals. Okay, so what are we going to say here? Neither. Neither. So these lines are neither parallel nor perpendicular based on their slopes. Although thinking about it now, I would say based on their slopes, these lines are neither parallel nor perpendicular. Would sound a little bit better, but gets the point across. Okay, question? Nope. Everybody good? Let's move on. Determine the value of k, number two. What does determine mean? Show work. Determine the value of k if So determine the value of k if kx plus 4y plus 7 equals 0 and 2k plus 2x minus 3y minus 16 are perpendicular lines. How are we going to go about doing this? Trevin? Uh, isolate the y variable in the first one and replace all y's in the second one. Yeah. I was with you, okay, to the isolate the y variable in the first one. Okay, what do we know about perpendicular lines? Well, they aren't. Their slopes are negative reciprocals. So what do we want to find for each of these lines? An expression for, for the slope. Okay, so let's start off by finding an expression for the slope of the first line. Okay, so the y is positive, so I'm just going to move stuff over, get negative kx minus 7. And then what? Divide by 4. So what's the slope equal to? Negative k over 4. Now, what are we going to do with the second line? Oh, sorry, this should say equal zero. So, what are we doing with the second line? Yeah, so find the slope, right? Put it in a slope intercept, slope y intercept form. So, 3y is equal to 2k plus 2 x minus 16. So what's y equal to? Okay, so we're just going to go through and divide by 3. So we have an expression. We've actually, we put both equations into slope y-intercept form. So let's look. List what the slope is, right? So it's 2k plus 2 over 3. Yep. Um, you can't 
simplify the 2K. Don't want to. I just want the slope. So doing that is counterproductive, right? What I want is the expression in front of the x, because that's the slope. Multiplying it into the x would mean I would then have to factor it back out again, right? Like you don't want 2kx plus 2x, because, okay? Remember, we're looking for something in the form y equals mx plus b. m is something in front of the x. This is the something in front of the x, right? That's the slope. Okay, so it's counterproductive to try and distribute it through, right? Because you would just have to back that step up again. Okay, since we know that these lines have to be perpendicular, what are we going to say? So why don't we work with this? What would we say about the slope perpendicular would be equal to what? 4 over k, right? So we take the slope of one of the lines, figure out what it's what the slope of the line perpendicular to it would be. So why did I choose the negative k over four, and not the two k plus two over three? Yeah, it's easier to work with, right? There's nothing wrong with writing negative three over two k plus two, but it's harder to work with. Okay, what am I now going to do with this and this? Compare it. We're, we're just going to do what? We're going to set them equal to each other, right? So we know that if these lines are perpendicular, and this is the slope of the given line, then the slope of the line perpendicular is this, so that this expression is equal to this, right? Okay, how do we solve? Yeah, multiply each side by 3k. So we'll end up with? Um, could you do it so it's like negative k over 4 times 2k plus 1 over 3? Yes. Okay. So the question was, could you do it so negative k over 4 times 2k plus 2 over 3 equals negative 1? Yes, you could. Okay. I wouldn't. I think this is easier, but yeah, certainly that would work. Uh, Look, looks like there could be. Okay, so we're going to now expand the left side, right? Getting 2k squared plus 2k. The right side is 12. We'll subtract 12 from both sides. We'll divide by k. Or sorry, we'll divide through by 2 because they're all. And what do we get? Okay, so what do you do every time that you factor? You check, right? You foil it out quickly. Just make sure, right? Okay, k squared minus 2 plus 3 is plus 1 minus 6. Yeah, right? Because where's the mistake going to come? It's not the 3 and the 2. You're going to get that, right? The 6 and the, the, well, you know, maybe you get 1 and 6, but that'll give you a 7 or a 5, so you'll quickly realize, oh, that's not it, right? So 3 and 2, usually it's the sign. Okay, so what do we say? k equals 4. So k is negative 3 or k is 2. Now, how do I know if I'm right? You check. You yeah. check. How would you check this? I'd like k is original. So let's go back here. We'll put the k in. Right? What did we say k was? So if k is equal to negative 3, this slope will be 3 over 4. Right? That's the negative k over 4. Uh, maybe I should show that. And this slope is 2 times 2k plus 2. Whoops. 2k plus 2 over 3 is 2 times negative 3 plus 2 over 3 is negative 4 thirds. Are these lines perpendicular? Yes. Yeah, 3 quarters, negative 4 thirds, they are negative reciprocal. You meant to shake your head. 
This is how we indicate yes. That's not. And what else did we say k was? Two. So if k equals 2, negative 2 over 4, which is negative 1 half. So what is this one going to work out to if it's true? Positive 2, right? So 2 times 2 plus 2 over 3 is 2. And yes, yes. OK? So there are two values for k. And we've worked them out. And we have verified both of them by going back. When would you do this? At the end of the test, right? When you're done everything else. You don't do this in the middle of a test. You get your answers. You leave them. Because if you are running behind, you can't be sitting checking answers during a test. It's like, yeah, I got those marks. But then I left 10 marks on the table because I never got to the last page. Right, or I didn't finish things. So you cannot uh, work tests that way. Number three, determine the equation of each line in the indicated form. Okay, so we've got like four forms of lines that we looked at, right? Two of which have names. One is slope y-intercept, right? Y equals mx plus b. One of them is uh, general form, ax plus by plus c equals zero. In order to get there, we have <coughs> two other formulas we used, right? Which was uh, definition of slope, m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, or point slope form y minus y1 equals mx, uh, x minus x1. OK, so what do we want to do? A line parallel to <laughs> 7x plus 2y. With a y-intercept of negative 4. And we want slope y-intercept form. And general form. choice is if you talk then you're going to come up here and you're going to do this. You get to teach. That's how it works. Talk, you teach. Unless you have a question then raise your hand. I'll be more than happy to call on you. But the little side buzz, 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 it stops. A line parallel to 7x plus 2y minus 10 equals 0 with a y-intercept of negative 4. That's what we want to find. We're going to do it in slope y-intercept form and general form. Okay, how we do this? What do we start by doing? For what purpose? you're looking to find. So you are converting it to y equals. You are converting it into slope y-intercept form with the purpose of finding the slope of the given line. Okay, so what do we got? Okay, so 2y is equal to negative 7x plus 10 and y is equal to 
negative 7 halves x plus 5, right? Now, how, okay, you're pretty good with that. I make any, maybe at some point I'll make a mistake on purpose, but I haven't yet, as far as I know. Uh, what do we do with this information? Yeah, so since we want a parallel line, we know the slope of the line we're looking for is, okay, so since the lines are parallel, so maybe up here we'll make a note, determine the slope of the given line. What do we need in order to find the equation of any line? What must you have? You gotta have the slope, right? Nope. Slope and a point. The y-intercept is a point, but it's not as restrictive, right? It's slope and a point. So in order to find the equation of any line, you need its slope, and then you need a point. Okay, since the lines are parallel, the slope of the line we need to find is negative 7 halves. Well, we need to find the equation of, I guess. Okay, so, so what? Now what? This is slope y-intercept form, so that's easy to write if you know the slope and the y-intercept. Not a lot of work to show, right? This one's easy. We just had to figure out the slope of the given line, and then we could immediately write the equation we wanted, right? They're parallel. They have the same slopes. You gave me the y-intercept, so I'm going to write the y-intercept. But what else do we need? General form. How are we going to get the general form? Wait, there's a question. Just bring the y on the other side. No. No. Not first. What am I, what's the first thing you can do? Multiply everything by 2. General form requires A, B, and C to belong to Z. What's Z? Uh, integers. integers. We cannot have fractions. So, 2y is negative 7x minus 8. And that leads to what? Okay, so when we're doing general form, we want a positive x value. So if the x is positive, we leave it where it is, we bring the y over. If the y, sorry, if the x is negative, we're going to move it over to the other side to make it positive, right? Along with whatever was with it. Okay? So if the x is positive, you're just moving the y over, the left side, right? Because we've solved this for y. We're starting with slope y intercept form. Okay, so starting with slope y intercept form we multiply through by the lowest common denominator, right? We have to get everything to be an integer. Once we've done that, we then look at the x value. Say, oh, you're negative, so you and the negative, the eight, negative 8 that's with you go to the other side and become a positive x. Okay? And this is it. So here's general form, and there's slope-intercept form. Okay, any questions? All good? 3B. A line perpendicular. Now you can do the negative reciprocal stuff.
5x minus 6y equals 24. And passing through. The midpoint. of the x and y intercepts We got a line perpendicular to some given line, which passes through the midpoint of the x and the y intercepts of some other line. So, where shall we start? So, let's find the slope of the given line, and then we will figure out what the slope of a line perpendicular is, right? So we're going to start by finding the slope of the line they gave us and then find the slope of the line that we want to find, right? Because we agree that one of the things we must have is the slope, okay? So then start there. It doesn't really, you could start with the midpoint, that would be fine, but I'd rather start with the slope. Okay, so I get 5x minus 6y equals 24. What are we going to write next? Or what are we going to write? 6y equals 5x. Minus 24, y is equal to 5, 6, x minus 4, right? We don't need the minus 4, we don't need the minus 24, right? What we really need out of that is the slope. But you know what? For the work that it takes, it's not really a whole bunch more work to just put it into slope y intercept. Okay? So, <coughs> what is the perpendicular slope? Negative 6 over 5. So this is the slope of the line that we want to find, right? And what does it do? Well, the line that we want to find goes through the midpoint of the x and the y-intercepts of this other line. So what do we need to find next? Okay, so x-intercept of... How do we get the x-intercept? How do we get the x-intercept? How do we get the x-intercept? Set y equal to 0, right? Just go in there faster. Right? Well, we'll make life nicer for you. So 4x is equal to 40, x is equal to 10. Okay, how do we find the y-intercept? So the y-intercept occurs when x is 0, so we get 4 times 0. So what is the y-intercept? Negative 8. What do we do next? Find the midpoint of that, of those two. Well, they're not really points, though, they're intercepts, right? So what do we do? So what's the point? What's the point? Okay, so remember, intercepts are always just numbers. If you ever write an intercept as an ordered pair, you're just going to lose the mark. Right? It isn't that. The intercept is a number. But 
that leads to an ordered pair. Okay. We may, and you don't have to, but we might want to just sort of sketch this out. So you say I got a y-intercept of negative 8, I got an x-intercept of 10. So this is 10, 0, and this is 0, negative 8. So my midpoint is at 5, negative 4. Yeah, you almost don't need to formally, you know, like it's kind of obvious, right? But I suppose, seeing as we said determined, you should actually show this, right? So midpoint, you know, and then we want a slope of negative 6 fifths. So that's going to be, you know, that line there. All right, but, okay, let's show the midpoint. So midpoint, x1 plus x2 over 2, y1 plus y2 over 2. So what do we got? 0 plus 10 over 2, and we've got negative 8 plus 0 over 2 gives me 5, negative 4. Okay, so what has the question now become? What's the question now? If I was going to rephrase the question, what would I ask? Determine the equation of a line with slope negative six fifths that passes through the line, through the point. 5, negative 4, right? So this question is now degenerate, right? We've worked our way to the point now where this question is just calculate the equation of a line given the slope and a point on the line, right? And that's, they're all eventually going to become that, right? So what do we have to do? Well, we have to jump through a bunch of hoops in the meantime, right? We had to find the slope of the line. We had to figure out the slope of a line perpendicular to that. We had to calculate the midpoint of some other line. Well, not really the line, because lines don't have a midpoint, right? But the midpoint of the x and the y intercepts of some other line, which means that from the x and y intercept, we have to get points so that we can calculate the midpoint. And now we're down to determine the equation of a line with. Okay, so I'm going to do that with this formula. Okay, y minus y1 equals mx minus x1. That's pretty much the only formula I use for this, right? I mean, if it says slope intercept and I have the slope and the intercept, then I'm not going to use this formula, right? Because I already have the slope and the intercept. Yeah, what's the name of the formula here? Point slope form. Okay, so it's y minus negative 4 is equal to negative 6 fifths x minus what? 5. Five. Okay, so y plus 4 equals negative 6 fifths x minus, no, plus what? 6. What's the next thing you want to write? y equals negative 6 fifths x plus 2. Now, is that, that slope intercept form, is that the slope we wanted? No, is that the slope we wanted? Really? Is that the equation we wanted? No. So what do we do? The first thing we do is we multiply by 5. You guys want to move the y's over, well, go ahead, but you're just making life a little more complicated for yourself than you need to. Get rid of the denominator first, all right? It's going to make your life easier. Because then you just decide, okay, do I move the x over? In this case, yes, I move the x over, or do I move the y over? Okay, in this case, we move the x over. Right? The sooner you get rid of fractions, the easier it becomes. So now it's just 6x plus 5y minus 10 equals 0. Right? And going back to the question Jay asked earlier, if there were a common factor here, then I would divide through by it and just simplify the, the equation. But there isn't one. You know, we got a 6 and a 10, which are even, but we also got a 5, so yeah. Okay, any questions? Yeah. How would you check those? Well, you could graph the two lines and then see if it looked like 
the second line went through the midpoint of the x and the y intercepts and looked perpendicular, right? That would be sort of a quick and dirty check to just graph those two equations. When you go to graph an equation, what form does it have to be in to put it in your calculator? Y yeah, y equals, which is slope y-intercept form, right? So, you, get, you know, in order to uh, graph something in your calculator, you need it in slope y-intercept form. Okay, C, a horizontal line passing through 6, negative 8. And we want this in slope y-intercept form. All right, so what is it, or how do we do it? How do you spell through? Well, there's another h on the end, I think. So. Otherwise, that's frog. Through. What would you like to do? I'll first get the right line because I was just thinking. Yeah, sure. And then we have to like plug in 6 and negative 8 with x and y values. Okay. Well. Six negative eight. Six negative eight. Horizontal one. Okay. So, what's the equation of that line? Y is equal to minus 8. Right? So, we could do y equals mx plus b, right? You could write slope y-intercept form. What's the slope of this line? Zero. Zero. What's the y-intercept? Negative. Yeah, so, you know, you could have put it into point-slope form and used that point. So really, if you just recognize, hey, it's a horizontal line, and a horizontal line is of the form y equals k, where k is the y-coordinate of the, you know, it's just y is a constant value, right? Since there is no slope, right? And by no slope, I mean a slope of zero. Not an undefined slope, which I would not say there's no slope if it was undefined. I would say the slope is undefined. I can say there's no slope when the slope is zero, right? Because there is no slope. It's a flat line. It has no slope. Okay, a line with no y-intercept. So really, when you're doing this stuff, it's really just thinking about what information do I have? Do they give me the slope? No. Do they give me some information so I can calculate it? Yes. Well, they gave me a point in the y-intercept. Oh, wait, but that means I have two points. And if I have two points, I can calculate slope, right? I just need to be careful, you know? That's why I always kind of like to draw stuff out and then just see if your slope matches your slope. Like, hey, this line should have a positive slope, but in my expression, I'm getting a negative slope. Well, either I drew this in correctly or I calculated something wrong. Okay. So that gives you a way of checking, which you can do in the middle of a test. Not the checking, let's go back and you know put the K back in type checking. That takes too long. But the, just the checking of, okay, this is what it looks like. I got this point, this point, and I got a line. I need a perpendicular line. So the slope of the given line going up to the right should be positive. My perpendicular line should be negative. Right? So th does it match? Okay. Just does the things make sense? Okay, line with no y-intercept. Uh, and passing through 410. Who does that point remind you of? Yeah, Mr. 410, right? Mr. 410. <laughs> Not a bad joke. I think it's a good joke. Look, Deep Pal's trying not to smile. She's laughing at you. Yeah. 
Okay. So, uh, what should we do with this? <laughs> Forgot uh, again. It's a frog. Or a through. Through. Something. Throg. Throw. Maybe it would be more of an O. O U. Something from the Lorax. Yes. Well, whatever. It's not a Dr. Seuss, I'm sure. Got the point four ten. How do I draw a line that has no y-intercept? You draw a vertical line. What is the equation of a vertical line? x equals 4. What does every point on that line have in common? x equals 4, same x value, right? So the equation of a horizontal line is always of the form y equals k, where k is the y value, of, you know, any and every y value on that line. And the equation of a vertical line is always of the form x equals. Yes? Because it's a vertical line. It's undefined because it's a vertical line. It has no run. You're trying to divide by zero. You can't do that. So there is not no slope. The slope is undefined. No slope is when the slope is zero. Right? In other words, it's a flat line. <clears throat> which in the end is how we all end up with a flat line. Okay, the equation of a horizontal line. So last thing, just to summarize this. The equation of a horizontal line can be expressed as, what's the equation of a horizontal line? Okay, so y equals k. And the equation of a vertical line can be expressed as x equals k. And that is all. So the first thing you want to do is your homework on this unit. You do not want to work on that review page yet. Right? Otherwise, you're basically giving up the marks on this particular section because you're not going to know it well enough. So do the questions from this section. Save this for later on or for tomorrow, right? Because tomorrow is review period. Oh, my God. We have to get a review period. Sorry. Oh, no. Sorry. Save it for tomorrow night's homework because you don't get a review period. We begin systems no, of no, equations. No. Yeah, thank you for mentioning it. So tomorrow we begin systems of equations, but that's when you can be working on this, right? So we're going to do the lesson tomorrow, after which you're probably going to study, but, you know, do this tonight, do this a bit later. Do at least some of the questions out of today's homework, right? You know, you may not do them all. You might say, oh, that one's the same as that one, or that's similar, or I know what to do. I can draw this out, I can do this, okay? Uh, the crazy work line could be expressed as...